Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is rated E for Everyone 10 and Up by the ESRB. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It has been some time since I've uploaded a video. The last time being actually the Banjo-Kazooie episode of Classic Mode. School has been long, so I do apologize that I haven't been uploading a new series yet. Though I have learned a lot, uh, my video export quality should have improved since I started. Wow, these are some really great colors. Um, so my video quality should have improved since we, since I guess I started. Um, so hopefully that's gonna be something that will be more visual as we continue these series. And hopefully as I get new, get better at doing my schoolwork, I can be better at getting to new series for my channel. Anyways, last time on Classic Mode, we finished Banjo-Kazooie here. And in this episode, we're going to deal with Terry and his Root, the King of Smash. As I just mentioned, I really love his colorations that he has. His standard... I've Just to be clear, I still have no idea who Terry is. So I don't know if these are in reference to other characters. They most likely are. They'll be down in the description below. My favorite color so far, just from cycling, has to be... The black one with the metal cap or the yellow. But because we're doing everything in the classic mode format, we are going to do Terry's in his classic colors. Straight up to 5.5, and I have no idea how to play as Terry. This is the first time I've done anything, and I'm doing the King of Smash. So his side B is this. Is this. I like that uh, down B move. Okay, one defeated. I'm... Okay, so Terry has the same mechanics as both Ken and Ryu. He will always face his rival, which is actually a really good idea, especially for these fighter game types. Uh, because... In those games, you always faced your rival. I don't know any... Hold on. Did Rosalina bounce off the side? I think she did. Sheik, Link, and Zelda. So I think Link it or Link Terry is dealing with the different groups of Smash Fighters and groups of three. Not entirely sure if that means anything. Maybe in Fatal Fury you were always against three targets. So far, we're doing really well. Two battles, up to 6.3. King of Smash, we're now dealing with heavyweights. Oh. 
I like that the bodies just vaporize with Terry's battle. It really makes the cleanup of these enemies nice and clean. Bring it, King K. I've recently discovered that King K's down B counter does have a limitation to it, where it will crack and break and do substantial damage. So if you ever play as King K rule, be careful of that. Next up, we are at 7.1 after the third battle. We are dealing with the angels, the divine beings. Get out of here, Pit. Dark Pit is next. Good counter move, Dark Pit. Too bad you vaporized. I'm really liking Terry. Or at least his classic mode. Oh gosh. I was scared. I was scared I'd lost. And there we go, Palutena is down. I'm definitely gonna have to research what, um, why Terry is called the King of Smash. Or why his path is called the King of Smash. Classic third party characters. This is actually quite fun. Get rid of Sonic. His speed was going to get annoying. Come on. Get out of here, Mega Man. Okay, that's another character. Now, Pac-Man is left. Bring it. Got him. Okay. I think Terry battles in groups of three against targets that correlate to each other. So, demons and monsters, maybe? Oh, what, it, what happened there? Darn. My moves were changing that. 
I guess it should be noted that I did not watch uh, Masashiro Sakurai's instructions on how to play as Terry. Ridley was quite a tough battle, and Ganondorf is going to be no joke. With all those heavy hits, all it takes will be a few hits of that sword to defeat me. What is with this go thing? Those will continue. Hmm. There's a couple of things that I don't know about Terry. For one thing, his go thing. I'll put a bar or something across that explains what that's gonna do. But I've never seen another... Well, I mean, if it's like... It can't be like M Little Mac, because I was doing the B move to try to release the go, and that did nothing. So I'm curious as to what... What the go was supposed to do. I guess it'll be something I'll find out later. Ow. Gosh, Terry, you're jumping! Okay. Let's try... Sideways! Did not make it in. Not gonna risk trying to battle. You can take damage on this field? Probably have taken damage from other combat battles. Okay, we made it through and now we're gonna fight the boss. And the boss is... Terry, Ken, and Ryu. Of course it's other fighters. Yeah, I knew it! Ryu bounced off of the wall. I don't think you can... You can't go off the sides on this map. we're going to continue with our ticket. And we're done. Still did not figure out what the go thing did. But that's going to be found out at the end. So anyways, guys. We... Ooh, 9.7. Of course, I did use smash tickets. So I don't think I actually deserve this 9.7. But that's what the tickets are for. 
Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this episode of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Classic Mode. In the next episode, we're going to continue with the last fighter of the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Classic Mode Fighter 1 Pass, who at this time has not been announced. I'm super excited to know who it's going to be. My guess is that it's going to be Ryu Hayasaki, I think is his name, from Ninja Gaiden. Which would be really cool because we don't have a lot of ninja-like characters. We have Greninja and Sheik. So another ninja character would be really cool to have. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think will be the fifth character of the first fighter pass. I'll see you guys in another couple of months for that episode. But in the meantime, we will be starting off our new episode series content. Octopath Traveler. That should be coming out sometime this week. It's going to start with the Primrose story. And I think you guys are going to like it. I'll see you guys in the first episode of Octopath Traveler. Have a wonderful day, and see ya! Final results.